Hello and welcome to this Teams Manager demo. I'm here to give you a good overview of Teams Manager and how it works and what the features are. To install Teams Manager, just access the App Store of Teams. Search for Teams Manager and add it to your tenant and client. For the installation, we recommend a tenant admin because the Teams Manager needs certain rights to roll out Teams and to um, create applications, um, to write chat messages, and so on. So if you've installed Teams Manager, you can pin it on the left side. Most of our customers have enrolled the Teams Manager for everybody, so every user can ask for new Teams. Setting up the Teams Manager is very easy, so just go to the settings and then to set up the two top permission sets are required. The third one is just optional if you like to work with the guest access feature of Teams Manager. This means that your users could ask in a um, approval workflow if they are allowed to invite um, guests to a specific team. If you've granted consent, you can start. We will start with the actual approval workflow, so the requesting of Teams. 95% of our customers have shut down the regular Teams creation. So it's not possible anymore to do this, clicking on Teams and then join or create a team and press this button. Therefore, you can find a PowerShell script in our Teams Manager block if you need it. After that, users will be only able to ask for new teams based on the Teams Manager. This looks like this. So they do have an overview of their chat messages of Teams Manager, of their requests and their teams. The active teams, the unmanaged teams and the archived teams. In the request tab, an admin or an approver would see everything like we do now. Regularly, a user just sees his own requests. So. If you would like to have a new team, the user would click add a request and then choose if this team should be private or public. This can be also changed later by the admin or the approver of this team. So we want to have a private team. We have an overview of the available templates we've been creating, and we would like to pick the template for new projects. And here we will now enter all the valuable information we need. So a team name, something like maybe test project in here, a description, this is a new project maybe, and then the owners and the members. And then if you choose to work with an approval process with a Teams manager, you need to leave a comment for uh, the approver of this team. So you would say something like, please approve, and you ask for the guest access so that you are allowed to invite guests. Next thing is very unique and only Teams Manager offers this feature. You can fill out metadata based uh, on the information the user has already in Teams with Teams Manager. So we will ask for a project start, for a project end, for a department, for a city, for a department number, the department leader, and another number. And also a project type. Is it internal or external? So let's say it's an internal project. These fields can be added to templates and you can customize all of them. So you decide what you ask your end users. If we press next, the Teams Manager will give us an overview of what will happen next. It will show the naming of the team, the final naming, the mail nickname, and the description, and all of the metadata we just have been entering, and also a life cycle. In our case, just for one day, as this is a demo environment. Now let's create the request. Immediately end up with a chat message at the responsible approver. He gets the message, a new request is waiting for approval. 
he can open this request in Teams Manager, sees it here on top and can open it and can decide if everything's correct. Maybe uh, the person said this is an internal project, but he asked for enabling the guest access anyway. As this is maybe against company policy, you can shut it down. After changing what's uh, been wrong or checking out, if everything is right, you can press next. You get again, also as a prover, an overview of what will happen next about the naming, the major data and the life cycle, and then approve the new team. The chat message now ends up with the end user, with the requester. He gets the message that his request was approved and that he now can work with his new team. That takes a couple of seconds and it's ready to go. In the meantime, let's check out the features of the Teams Manager. First of all, everything is available for admins and end users, but only admins can make setting changes, create templates, and only approver can approve actual team requests. Our settings tab gives you a lot of options. In the approver section, you can decide if you want to have the approval workflow and who is responsible. Even different approver groups can be created. In the notification tab, you can decide if you want the Teams Manager to communicate via a bot or via email or both. In the templates tab, you can create new templates based on your structure, save them and add metadata to them. I'll show later how to create a new template. The views are based on your metadata. So you can create different views for your end users when it comes to all of their teams in the overview. So you could say you want to have a project overview with all important project metadata. These metadata fields can be customized. For example, here we have the template for new projects. On these three little bubbles, we can uh, press set fields and then set up everything we need, change it, make it required, make new fields or add existing ones. Naming conventions are structured very easy. You can create as many naming conventions as you like. So just press create new naming convention and go for it. In our case, we do have the project naming convention for teams. It's a P underline as custom prefix, then a metadata and then a custom uh, underline. Also for plan and OneNote, we can create um, naming conventions. In our case, it's very easy. We do just the, uh, the team name as a prefix to our actual planner and OneNote name. For life cycle, you can create several life cycles and in this case we could say it's not with teams creation this life cycle should start with the project end and it should archive the team after 180 days it should notify the user that his team gets archived 14 days prior to archiving you can also use the deletion feature in here but to be honest it's used very rarely if you really want to delete a team, you can use this feature and a deleted group can be found in the Active Directory under deleted groups and can be pulled back for 30 days. With the policies, you summarize your governance rules. After summarizing them and giving this policy a name, and picking the project naming convention and the project lifecycle or even classifications you can create over PowerShell in your Active Directory, you can build a policy execution. In our case, this policy execution starts on team creation. It has the policy package projects we've just been creating and it rolls out if somebody takes a template that has something to do with projects. You could also build it based on metadata. So let's say you only want to roll it out if the leader or the department is sales or IT. So you can build a very specific naming convention and rule set if you want to make it um, very clear uh, or very precise when it comes to naming conventions. 
After creating this, it brings us to our um, approved team we did earlier. So our new team is now already available and ready to work. The teams manager created everything based on a template we've been creating before. So it looks completely different to an out of the box team as it has already an info page of teams manager where every information is stored. Here you can find the general information and also the policies and metadata of a team. You can also edit this data. In project notes, you have a OneNote already ready to go, even with a little bit of content. You can build content already in the templates and roll it out every time uh, a new team gets asked for. So in this case, we do have a little structure in our OneNote. We do have the nice naming convention that got rolled out. Also in the planner that is pinned here, we do have buckets and also a first task. And in here we do have folders. So to summarize this, with the Teams Manager, you can roll out teams based on templates with a channel structure, also private channels, with the info page of metadata and policies, with Planner and OneNote already pre-structured with content and also folder structures. And last but not least, you can also roll out permissions for members. So as you know, if you roll out a team out of the box, a user is allowed to do everything with Teams Manager. It's possible to really specify what they can do if such a team gets rolled out. Everything we see here is based on a template. These templates should be created with an admin or a service account so just admins or the service account can even see these templates while creating them. I do have them here in my hidden teams as this is a demo environment and I want to show you both sides. In here, I do have the template for new project, projects. You see here, the structure is absolutely the same. I do have my structure in here with the project OneNote that is a template OneNote. If you roll it out, the Teams Manager will create a completely new one. You have your project tasks, so your planner, and also your different files or your different folders in this case. SharePoint artifacts are something we will bring out later in the year 2021. They're on our roadmap. So you have a template. If you're happy and you've created this template, you can go back to Teams Manager if you made any changes, go to templates as an admin of Teams Manager and save it. Here it is. You can just press on these three little dots and then save the template. If you want to create a new template, you can just press create a new template and make new project template, the name of it maybe in our case and make a description. The Teams Manager will now create a new team, mark it as a template and save it. And then you can build it completely without any coding or scripting. You just need your Teams client for it and the Teams Manager. This takes up to 30 seconds and then we can start building a new template. Now our new template has been created and we find it here. As I said, Use an admin or service account so nobody but you can see this template. Here we can start building the new template. So we can add channels. And then maybe delete the wikis and build up the structure of your team. After you build everything up and you're happy with your channel structure, with your applications um, and everything else, just go to the Teams Manager, to Templates and save it. Last but not least, you can add metadata fields to the template. So information you want to ask your end user. So for example, the leader of the team, the project start, 
the project end or the project type, add them. And now next time somebody asks for a new team, he will be also asked for this specific information. You can also have an overview of metadata in Teams for your end users and can build views for that. In my case, I have a project view with the project metadata I have in here and just edit. As you see, everything is here. You can arrange these views in the settings tab under views. Coming to the lifecycle feature when creating governance policies. The Teams manager will always write and inform the user that a team is about to expire. In here, the end user can then pick that he wants to extend the team for three, six, nine, or 12 months. And if it's actually archived, he can reactivate the team. We are using the Microsoft out of the box archiving feature. So a team that is archived can always be pulled back by the owner or an admin or over the team's manager. It can be reactivated for three, six, nine, or 12 months. And you can just do it here. Thanks for watching this overview of Teams Manager. We are looking forward in seeing you in an actual demo and are happy to show you the Teams Manager again. If you want to download it, remember, just click on Teams Manager in the Teams App Store. If you want more information, just write an email to info at solutions to share .com.